was your reaction? Well, my reaction was I was at Costco buying, you know, 10 boxes of Keurig coffee, uh, and uh, my, my, my watch started to buzz, and I got so excited I started leaking a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Trump or Biden? I'm definitely left-leaning, very, very heavily left-leaning. Do you think the other people would guess that? You know, socialism is good. Who do you think this guy is voting for, Trump or Biden? Oh, that's a Biden voter. I've, I've seen a Biden voter, and that's one of them. Why? I mean, TikTok hair. Who are you voting for, Trump or Biden? This guy right here. You think other people would guess that? Probably. Who do you think this guy is voting for, Trump or Biden? He has a Trump shirt on, but maybe it's... Ironic? So Biden? Nope. And who would you vote for? Trump or Biden? I would vote for Biden, I guess, if a gun was to my head. Why? I don't know. Do you think other people would guess that? Yeah, look at me. I have a nose piercing. You can tell who I'm voting for. You know who I'm voting for. Who do you think this person will vote for? Trump or Biden? Uh, that's definitely gotta be a Biden supporter right there. Why? It's kind of, you know, simple. You can just tell that she likes poverty. What do you think of Trump? I think I'm going to vote for him. Really? Yeah, in the next election. Yes, I am. I, Are you ready for the blowback? Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if the, inevitably comes Well, Trump. you know, I think this election, everybody's got to, I think they're going to take a side or whatever, but it's, uh, it just seems to me, he just makes sense. I was ready not to vote for Trump until I, what I saw is more than politics. I, I see a weaponization of our justice system yeah. and uh, a, a challenge to our, our constitution, uh, and, uh, us as Americans, that I don't think we're going to have. And, um, you know, Trump is the most investigated person probably in the history mm. of the world. Mm. And they haven't been able to really get him. People might call him an asshole. But he's my asshole.
You don't have to go to hell. You're in hell. This is hell. This is hell. This is hell. This is hell. Because democracy basically means government by the people, of the people, for the people. But the people are retarded. <laughs> then strangled them and finally dismembered their body. Bright then do available. And homelessness and all that. And now, the voice you've been waiting for. There is a secret song at the center of the world. Sound is like racist through flesh. I'm here to turn off the volume. I'm kind of retarded. Well, I've got some good news, everybody. According to a strategist with the Carson Group, it turns out that high interest rates actually might be helping U.S. consumers. Wait, what? The fuck do you mean? I know it might not seem like it to a lot of people because of mortgage rates being at multi-decade highs and credit card delinquencies are on the rise. They don't mention that credit card debt is also at an all-time high. But there's another side of that story that warrants more attention, and it involves money market funds. You see, while interest payments for Americans have jumped, they've been offset by a jump in interest income in money market accounts. And it's estimated there's more than $6 trillion in money market accounts currently. And most of those accounts are earning close to 5%. Ah, oh, $6 trillion sounds like a lot. There must be a lot of Americans that have them. I wonder how many Americans have money market accounts. Oh, 11%. <laughs> Well, that's good. I'm glad that the high interest rates are at least helping out the richest 11% of Americans. And for some reason, they didn't include this statistic in their little article. I just happened to come across that little gem whilst I was looking for this. This was a chart that I had saw somebody, I think, on Twitter post, showing the comparison of how much we spend on our defense budget versus just the interest payments on the debt we've accumulated. Because for the very first time, that's set to overtake defense spending later this year. Year. And this doesn't even include paying down any of the actual debt. This is just keeping up with the interest payments, like paying the minimum balance on a credit card. But the more in debt we go and the higher the interest rates go, the more money we have to pay to the private banking cartels. But hey, I'm sure it's fine. This is probably nothing to be concerned about. Instead, you should be worried about this dangerous criminal alert. Police are searching for the driver caught doing donuts, damaging the Progressive Pride street mural. Just after 2.40 Wednesday morning, a vehicle is caught on a security camera doing donuts, damaging a Pride mural on Central Avenue in St. Petersburg. Tire marks still visible on the street. My reaction is uh, disappointment, not surprise. Um, I think anytime we're in a situation where we have public displays of pride, our authentic selves, people are going to have a reaction to it. Dr. Byron Green Collish is president of St. Pete Pride. He feels someone targeted the mural. He says the mural is visual representation that everyone is welcomed here. Well, it appears the people that enjoy doing donuts aren't welcome there. St. Pete police say over the past week, two different vehicles have left tire marks on the mural. One where a driver accelerated on Friday, May 17th at around 930 in the morning. The second incident, that vehicle doing donuts. Officers do not believe the two cases are connected. Mayor Ken Welch posted on Instagram saying, in light of the recent vandalism targeting the Progressive Pride flag mural, there is no place for hate in St. Petersburg. St. Pete police say the person responsible faces a criminal mischief felony charge since it will cost the city $1,100 to restore the mural in time for Pride Month festivities. How about that? A criminal mischief felony charge. Which means that according to some people who are even Second Amendment supporters, if they catch these two people and convict them, that they should never be allowed to have the fundamental right to self-defense for the rest of their lives. I mean, after all, they're going to be felons. And I suppose we could also say that about the former president. After all, he is now a convicted felon, so apparently he shouldn't have the right to own a firearm for the rest of his life either. Oh, that's different though, right? 
Why? Because the case was bullshit? Yes, and he's the first person to ever be railroaded by the US justice system. It was literally right as I got home from work on Thursday that the breaking news, the jury has reached a verdict. Which immediately anybody with half a brain knew what it was going to be. A lot of people were seriously thinking it would end up being a hung jury after the way the trial turned into a dumpster fire where you had your star witness up there, a convicted liar, admitting on the stand that he committed grand larceny stealing from the Trump organization tens of thousands of dollars. But after finding out the fucking judge's instructions to the jury about how, oh, you don't have to be unanimous about what the underlying crime is, that doesn't matter. Pardon me, but that's bullshit. And the fact that he didn't release the alternate jurors, meaning if you had a holdout, he could just replace them. Well, it became pretty obvious that one way or another, they were gonna make this conviction happen. And the news had their graphics all ready, and as the counts were being relayed from inside, popping it up, guilty, guilty, guilty. And all the news channels were getting every bit of mileage they could out of it. Hey, look, it's a convicted felon. This guy right here is a convicted felon. But the only problem is, See, nobody cares. Which is stupefying to a lot of people, apparently. On both sides, as a matter of fact, because on the left, people just can't seem to understand how people would still support a convicted felon. And then on the right, you've got the people that just don't understand why they would keep pressing on with these court cases when it's not having any effect on his support. In fact, his support keeps going up. The more cases they brought, it solidified his support and was actually getting him new support. And they had already done a bunch of polls too, asking Trump supporters, if he gets convicted, would you reconsider your support? And the overwhelming majority answered with, absolutely fucking not. And so the best reasoning they could come up with for it was, well, you know, these people are twice as dumb as shit, so. But here's the thing, while you've got people like Biden and Kareem Jean-Luc Pierre and Blinken and Kirby and these dumb fucks that get up there and do the George W. shtick of, oh, I'm too much of a dumbass to be evil, the people that are really running the show here are not that fucking stupid. And I've really only seen this angle and this assessment come from one other person who has an unfortunate habit of being right about bad shit. And that's that the point of this was never to make him lose support. The point was to create a situation where somebody could make good on all the warnings that Biden's been giving for three fucking years now about the massive threat posed by white supremacists. He's been going on and on about that shit. He said it in the past week. He said it last year. He said it the year before that. He said it right after getting into office. The biggest terrorist threat that we face comes domestically from these radical white supremacists. And I can guarantee you he didn't get there on his own and he didn't pull that out of his ass. That's a warning that he was instructed to relay over and over and over. So that's what I'm expecting to see. Sometime between now and the convention in the middle of July, July. It might happen in the next week, or they might wait until after he gets sentenced because shit, maybe the judge will actually try to put him in jail just a few days before the fucking convention. But sometime in the next month and a half, I'm expecting to see some kind of Oklahoma City slash Boston Marathon type of shit. And now we've just started Pride Month, so a lot of those events would make opportune targets. Or maybe they'll hit something like a fucking Juneteenth parade. I don't know exactly what it's gonna be, but I just got this gut feeling that whatever it is, it's gonna be big. It's gonna be more than some little pressure cooker bomb that kills three people, or, or somebody in a car running down a dozen people. They need something really fucking major to happen. And meanwhile, while everybody spent the weekend talking about the Trump conviction, there was very little discussion of this. The Joey Skidmark's administration quietly giving Ukraine permission to strike inside of Russia. Of course, this is something they've been doing, but now they don't have to pretend like they aren't. And I love this little byline. It's a major reversal that will help Ukraine to better defend its second largest city. <laughs> what a bunch of fucking bullshit but it will climb one rung higher on the escalation ladder. And they go on to say that this is just a limited thing where they're gonna allow them to strike military targets only and only right across the border. They're not gonna allow them to use the Army Tactical Missile Systems or ATACMS for short to launch strikes deep in the heart of Russia. Of course, it wasn't that long ago that they were saying, no, we, we can't give them tanks and F-16s because then we'd be directly at war with Russia. They've just been slowly ratcheting up the S 
escalation and basically daring Russia to respond, all the while acting like it's Russia doing all the escalation. And the longer this goes on, the more Putin gets pressured by his own pundits and politicians to just go ahead and make good on their threat to take this shit nuclear. It's a strategy known as escalate to de-escalate, where you go ahead and set off a small tactical nuke, maybe not even in a place that's populated, just to show that, listen, we weren't fucking bluffing. And then you hope that your enemy responds with... Whoa! Whoa! Okay! And then they're willing to come to the table and negotiate because the reality of holy shit this could destroy the entire world sets in. But I don't think the asshats that are running this shit show even care anymore. And I'm starting to think that if the Russians don't go ahead and use one, somebody will go ahead and use one for him. After the Soviet Union fell, there was a lot of weapons floating around. You don't think it's possible that Western Intelligence Agency could have gotten their hands on one? So if all of a sudden I hear that a Western city has been nuked and they tested the isotopes and it was a Russian bomb, you know who my first suspect would be? And I'm hoping that I'm wrong about this because I'd be as fucked as anybody. I live just outside a major city, near two major shipping ports, an air force base, and a nuclear power plant. And down here in South Florida, basements don't fucking exist, so it's not like I can create some kind of fallout shelter. So I really hope I am fucking wrong. Slancha. in this world is my thoughts and my word and I don't break them for no one. You understand? So say good night, so say good night to the bad guy. So say good night, so say good night to the bad guy. So say good night, so say good night to the bad guy.